Okay, today I'm going to do something a little unusual. I'm going to briefly presenting the final eight gates of Hoth, or the final eight gates of Mem, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, mostly because these, all I can do is briefly comment on these gates, and I'm anxious to get to Malkuth, which comes next. Um, so, I'm going to do these in two groups of four. The first group of four will be two quadrangles and two pentangles. Now, <clears throat> the first gate, gate number 102, these first four that I'm going to be discussing all focus around the path of Mercury, that connection between Gebura and Hod, okay? That is the most, really the most important part of these gates. Now, the first gate, 102, goes from Netzach, following the path of Mem over to Hod, up that path of Mercury to Gebura, up the path of Virgo to Tiferet, and then down the hidden path to Netzach, and then, of course, back around. Now, like I said, the most, really most important part of this gate is the connection between Hod and Gebura, Mercury, and what is communicated through Mercury via Gebura into Hod, into the rational intellect, which is, you know, a part of this uh, Mem dynamic, okay? It's one of the back and forth stations <laughs> in that Mem dynamic, okay? So, <clears throat> the second gate is a pentangle, the first of our pentangles. Now, this one feels very balanced, but again, the main focus is over here in Mercury, okay? So it goes from Netzach, across the path of Mem to Hod, up the path of Mercury to Gebura, up the path of Virgo to Tiferet, down the path of Leo, into Gedjula, and Gedjula down the path of Venus, into Netzach, and then back around. Okay, now, this speaks of the balance of forces being communicated by, by Mercury into Hod and the dynamic of Mem. Okay. So, a great sense of equilibrium can be achieved through this gate and this integration between the individual self and the personal self, between the air region of the mental body and the water region of the mental body. Okay, our third gate, gate number 104, is it begins in Tif, I mean in Netzach, follows the path of Mem over to Hod, takes that path of Mercury up to um, up to Gibura, okay, and then the hidden path up to Kether, and then the hidden path from Kether down to Netzach, and then back around. Okay, so <clears throat> this illustrates the input of Kether into Gebura Hod, Mercury, this is part of what is communicated to Hod, and also what is communicated to Netzach. So both of the poles of Mem. <clears throat> Now, our fourth gate is gate 105, and it again 
is a very balanced gait, okay? And it goes from Netzach along the path of Memtahod up the path of Mercury to Gebura, up the hidden path all the way to Kether, and then down the hidden path all the way to Gedula, and then down the path of Venus into Netzach, and then back around. Okay. So <clears throat> this takes. Uh, the last pentangle, which went up to Tiferet and had that sense of balance radiating from Tiferet, this time it takes it up to Kether and shows the influence of Kether as it trickles down through these other layers into the Netzachod dynamic. So that brings us to the next four, which is two triangles and two quadrangles. <clears throat> okay, the first is a triangle. This is gate 106. Now this also brings a sense of balance, but a simpler, more direct sense of balance into this foundation of the water region of the astral body. So it begins in Netzah, follows along Mem to Hod, takes the hidden path up to Tiferet, and then the hidden path from Tiferet down to Netzah, and then back around. So this just pivots off of Tiferet and shows you the importance of the solitary self in any consideration of the astral self. I mean, it's really the solitary self, the Tiferet self, that is inhabiting the astral body, okay? It's a transitory body for the solitary self as it enters into manifestation. It's required in order for the solitary self to manifest. It must go through this phase, this astral phase. Okay. Now, the next one, gate 107, is a quadrangle. And it takes this same sense of the solitary self integrating into the astral self, but does a slight diversion into Gejula, okay? So it's a little more complex than the last gate. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> we start again in Netzach, across the path of Mem, water, over to Hod, up the hidden path to Tiferet, and then down the path of Leo into Gejula and the path of Venus down to Netzach and back around. So, obviously, instead of that hidden path from Tiferet back to Netzach, we are looking at the influence of Leo and Venus and Gejula, the collectivity, okay? So that's the the main impression of this gate. Mm -hmm. The next one, gate 108, is again a triangle. And this is both balancing and elevating. And it makes the connection between Kether and the astral self, the direct connection between Kether and the astral self. So, we start in Netzach, travel across the path of Memtahod, up the hidden path to Kether, down the hidden path from Kether to Netzach, and then back around. So, this elevates, well, it really, it really educates one on the necessity that the oneself 
has in its process of self-realization and the ultimate aim, if you will, of this self-realization to manifestation in the temporal present moment, the importance, the value of the astral body, how that transition into material manifestation is impossible without this phase of the astral body, the body that enables the interaction between self and other, right? It has to go through this phase in the process of self-realization in order to manifest in the material world to manifest as the material world. It's not so much that it must, it's just the way that it does. Okay? There's a difference there. Uh, there's not... Uh, there is a necessity to it. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> The final gate here, the final gate of Hod and of Mem, is gate 109. <clears throat> and uh, what it does is it takes this connection with Kether again through Gejula and Venus, okay? So, this gate starts in Netzach, follows along Mem over to Hod, takes that hidden path all the way up to Kether, and then the hidden path from Kether to Gedjula, and then down the path of Venus into Gedjula, and then back around. Now what this does is it stresses just ever so clearly the importance of collectivity and that urge to merge that pervades the whole of the eye's self-realization, okay? The whole process of self-realization, that urge to merge, is always there. Okay? So, <clears throat> that is the last gate of Hod. And next video, I will begin talking about Malkuth. Malkuth is the realm of consequence. So the next set of videos will be quite consequential. So, until then, bye-bye.